Guys, absolute pleasure to um, be here today with you today. Um, we'll have um, my uh, colleague Will as well doing a couple of the slides, so hope that's okay with you guys. Um, just really to sort of get started with Darktrace, as I mentioned, I'm one of the sort of senior team here, and we've been, I think in the time I've been here, seen a massive development, especially the um, use of sort of offensive AI as well as the defensive AI. So something that is a, a real topic that I think we are hopefully going to cover in a bit more detail with you. Um, hopefully this clicker works, otherwise I might have to rely on yourself there, Mike, to press next, if that's all right. Thank you. Um, so for those of you who don't know Darktrace ourselves, we are the founders of AI for cybersecurity. We were set up by former GCHQ and MI5 security operatives, and um, that was sort of in 2013, with the idea of bringing security and AI together, merging the two, really. Um, since then, fast forward to where we are now, we've had phenomenal growth. We are in the FTSE 250 uh, companies there, and have, well, I think that even is a bit outdated now, 7,500 customers worldwide. Uh, the key thing sort of to note with that is it doesn't matter where you are in your security journey, how big, how small the company is, there is a place that Darktrace can fit for you. Uh, and I'll cover a bit of the key reasons why that is uh, in this sort of next 10 minutes that we have uh, myself here. Um, next slide, if that's all right. So just to really talk about, I think, the key thing here is the changing landscape. Security is never the same from month to month, year to year. And even in the sort of 2022, I think it's, we've seen quite obviously some big changes there, especially in the geopolitical side of things there. state back attacks are something that have always been the case, but I think the key thing that we've got here is we're seeing increased sort of espionage and mistrust between different countries there. I mean, the Russian espionage, for example, with SolarWinds that we saw with US-based IT companies actually sort of getting compromised and by proxy there, also some US government agencies. Now this has sort of led to the Department of Justice identifying that ransomware is gonna be treated with the same vigilance as terrorism. So I think that really just emphasizes the importance of cybersecurity for companies nowadays. Not only companies, obviously individuals as um, the Colonel mentioned there itself. But really what it comes down to is it not just sort of those geopolitical, I think we're seeing a massive change in also the sort of supply chain side of things that we see there with attacks on key figures and key sort of technologies such as your, your solar winds, the Log4j, which Will will talk around shortly. And with that, what that really leads to is a sort of almost a, a worry of what technology am I using? Is this gonna be okay for me? And as well as it's good, everyone uses technology, but the reality is, is how are you gonna secure that? More companies are relying on these third parties. I think since the start of COVID especially, we had companies flipping what they do on their heads. It's no longer a everyone nine till five in the office or um, nine till nine if it's our case, unfortunately, um, but it's people working from home. How are you gonna cover those people? How are you gonna give them protection? And really when it comes to security, your peace of mind, how are you gonna relax and know that you don't have to worry about so-and-so clicking on a bad link just because they have no idea what they're doing with their emails, which I'm sure is uh, the case for many people. I know I've had some instances in my team. This one's safe, though. Um, and then we come to not only that, but also what that means from inside of threats. The great resignation, as we, we've seen over the past sort of uh, year or two with the disparity in um, enjoyment, if you like, of, of actually work and people trying to exfiltrate data there. With that, this reliance on cloud as well has led to this risk of, okay, is an employee going to slip up, but also what are we going to do about it? And that's where we're looking at not only this and then how ransomware in, in itself evolves there. It's no longer the case that it's trying to sort of enumerate a number of different files. We're actually trying to, ransomware itself is trying to target earlier stages of an attack, i.e. getting compromises of these particular accounts. And from that, what we're seeing is that it's not just the case that we are sort of having these generic attacks that are all the same. They're very targeted, very specific. And that's where hopefully we can show you where Darktrace steps in on that. Um, next slide, if that's all right. And I think the key thing to differentiate here and why Darktrace are who we are today is we took a pretty much fundamentally different approach to security. Now, a lot of security, and we, we call it sort of a rear view approach, is based on traditional sort of rules and signatures, i.e. we've seen an attack in the past, we know what it is, we know how to deal with that. Now, as I mentioned, Ransomware in itself has become far more complex. It's no longer the case that it's the same thing, but it is actually new and novel threats popping up every day. And not even just ransomware, there is a whole bunch of different things that we don't know about, you won't know about until it suddenly comes out on the news. 
And what we're trying to do is identify as early as possible with that. And this is where we've introduced our autonomous response here. Now, the key thing to differentiate between that and um, automated response, sorry, if you don't mind popping up a slide there, is aut automated response is great, but it's maybe can be criticized being too binary, i.e. it's either too strict in what it does or it's too lenient and lets too many things through. What we're looking to do with our autonomous response capability here is identify, okay, what have we got here? But also then, how do we take the appropriate action to deal with that particular incident, whatever it may be? So just talking a bit on the detect piece as well, if you don't mind flicking up uh, one slide there. Uh, apologies, we've, uh, I've got lack of control here. If you could go up back a couple of slides. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so this is sort of that fundamental difference that we, we've got here. And how that works is we liken this to your human immune system. I think COVID is a perfect example nowadays, although we wonder, is it still a thing? Is it not a thing? It definitely is a thing, as we can see with Lisa today. But with COVID, I think the great analogy here is that we all have our immune systems and our bodies know how we function, what is normal, what is a normal behavior for how we operate day to day. Now, when COVID first hit, our bodies didn't have set antibodies to fight back against these as sort of the likening to a rules and signatures, set things that we know this is how we can fight back against that. But what our bodies did understand is something's wrong here. There's a bad bacteria or virus. Send a message to our brain to fight back against this. And it's exactly the same principle that we have when we deploy into businesses and their operations. We look to learn what is normal, what we call patterns of life. So imagine this is kind of a perfect circle. This is how your, your users, your servers typically respond and typically act on a day to day. Now by learn, knowing that normal, that's what allows us to spot any deviations from this. Whether that's an insider who's looking to exfiltrate some data or a fast moving worming attack that's sort of exfiltrating a number of different files and causing havoc in your, in your, in your internal environment. Now what we're looking to do here is by understanding that normal, we can then pick up these deviations and as such take an appropriate response piece there, if you don't mind switching to that slide. Fantastic. And this is where the dark trace autonomous response is. Now, uh, as the Colonel mentioned, AI is sort of the future of this. Now, our response capability is based on this same fundamental technology, knowing what is normal and then by knowing that, knowing those deviations. And as such, the response is proportionate to that. So it's no longer the case of CX do Y, CY do Z, which as we mentioned is either too strict, stops too much business operations, or too lenient, lets too many things through. Now, I think sort of a good example here is, I'm sure everyone's familiar with Gartner there. Gartner said that the future of cybersecurity is autonomous response. Now, we actually coined this phrase in 2017 when we released our anti-gena feature, our response capabilities. And the key thing here is taking a proportionate and surgical response in real time there. So we will go over a couple of examples of how that is the case there, but one anecdote that I always love is, at the time, we were working um, in 2017 with a couple of NHS trusts when we first were sort of in our early stages of our response capabilities. Now, not only were we able to detect the one across sort of incident for those trusts that we were working with, but actually take action to stop those attacks within 10 seconds. So for those NHS trusts, it was a pretty much a non-event, which if there's a ma major event going on, that's what you want. You don't want to be worrying about it. You want about something to contain it as soon as possible so that when you do have to clean up and deal with it, it's minimal. And it's not the case that there's a thousand different devices. You're going to have to pull the network off and business operations cease. I think the average downtime for a ransomware attack is known to be about 21 days or so. Now, hopefully that's not happened and you've not had that experience. But the key point is having something there that 3 a.m. when you're not around, being able to take action to stop that. Now, coupled with this, what we're looking to also have is the ability to have explainable AI. So it's all well and good having this technology that do, does all this magic, amazing things, but you need to know what it does. And it doesn't mean the case that you have to be a security expert with training every week, every month to know what exactly you're doing, but actually knowing that, okay, there is something in place there, but the AI, again, harnessing that, using that to be able to understand what is going on, giving a layman's term explanation of this is what we're seeing, this is why we're this bad, this is why it's, this is why we need to do the certain things. And identifying things that would take hours to pull through different logs, such as who's patient zero, what is the bad executable that's caused this. Now we'll run through a bit of that in the example for, for Will there, but I think the key thing to note with that is what we're trying to do is take that heavy lifting of security off of the main users there. I'm sure a lot of you have maybe teams of security uh, members or you're a one-man band who is dealing with more than just, just sort of security and a whole bit of different processes in IT. You don't simply have the time to manage everything that's going on there. 
So what we're looking to do is introduce that capability, not only just in the traditional network, but also across your entire infrastructure there, from your cloud, your SaaS, your endpoints, as well as things like your email environments, IoT, and OT devices there, your operational technology. So effectively applying that same knowledge and understanding across your entire digital estate, so that you've got every piece of information you need in one place there to deal with any situation that may occur. Um, next slide, if that's all right. I'm gonna hand over to Will to run through a few examples of this level of visibility that we're able to provide there. Morning, everyone. <clears throat> so creators of Ariville claimed over $100 million in 2020, specifically through ransomwares and, excuse my pronunciation, Sodin Okabee, which wipes backup files, encrypts files, shares, and exfiltrates data, then threatening to leak this data if there is no ransom paid. Now, um, as Callum mentioned, the way that we, we kind of be able to show the value of Darktrace, we run what we call a proof of value. That's a three month trial, not only to show you the value of Darktrace, but to be able to show you exactly how it integrates with what you already have and how it's gonna integrate with what you do on a day to day. Now, during this example, we were in a proof of value trial in a retail organization, so we're only in passive mode. We're not making any response functions, which is why we're able to see every single stage of this attack. Now, obviously, if we're in full autonomous mode, the antigena that Callum mentioned, we're looking to cut in and step in at the first initial stages, but because we were in this passive mode, we're able to see exactly how it unfolds. Now, you can see here at the start, an IT member's details were compromised used to compromise a domain controller, rare endpoint connections, network scan, and then upload to cloud endpoints. They leveraged frequently used cloud storage data centers like Dropbox and new domains, meaning that open source intelligence features simply were blind to the threat. Finally, the malware itself was evasive in the sense that it used obfuscation and encryption. So this is the basis for most ransomware attacks now, and the reality is these, these signature-based tools looking for something that's happened in the past cannot keep up. Darktrace's AI not only detected the anomalous activity associated with the every stage of the attack, but then generated a fleshed out summary to make actionable insights for you as an IT team. Now this ransomware slips under the radar of a range of existing tools that were already in this retail company. However, despite it being in there for over a month and blending in with local tools in regular traffic, from Darktrace's point of view, we'd created this pattern of life, this DNA of this own environment. And so this activity was completely anomalous to what we would associate normal with your network and were able to respond accordingly. Next slide, please. Log4j, one of last December, I'm sure there'll be many people in the room who remember exactly what happened. So in this example, in this rare external IP was used for command and control, communication, and the malware delivery, which was highly unusual for this device, this peer group, this organization, and this network. If you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, please. The example of what we've got here is what we call our AI analyst. So this is the piece triaging together individual incidents, disparate events from across the network, and piecing them together, either showing you what you as an IT team can do if we're in human passive mode, or if what we are doing as an autonomous response function. Antigena reacted in real time in this organization based on the specific contents of the attack without any human in the loop whatsoever. Antigena interacted within the organization's firewall in this case to block any connections from that malicious IP. And you can see on the timings, Sunday, December 12th, Callum said we work hard, but none of us are working at that time. You can see at eight seconds past and 18 minutes, you see the rare connection. And at 10 seconds past, two seconds later, antigenia response has blocked the connection, therefore severing the threat, but allowing for the rest of the business to carry on as normal. Here comes the trick. Thanks to self-learning AI, Darktrace knows exactly what that internet-facing server does do, and then what it doesn't normally do, down to each individual data point. Based on the various anomalies, Darktrace then associates that with a cyber attack. Antigena now steps in and enforces that normal pattern of life, meaning the server continue what it does normally do, but the highly anomalous interactions are interrupted as they occur in real time. And of course, the human has the ability to either step in and do this themselves, or the autonomous response to do it for them. Thank you there. Um, last slide, if that's all right. So just to summarize, I think the key thing here, it's all about AI. Now, the reality is every individual here and every company has their own preference or trust to how, how to build trust with AI. And all it's about is doing the different levels that we can go into there, whether that is starting in passive mode, moving to a human confirmation mode, where you get an alert through with your app saying, okay, we need to take this action, are you happy with it? And then building that full autonomous of trust. Now, what we're looking to do at, at sort of the side on our, our sort of desk there is run through some real world examples with you and provide you a bit of a demo of actually what level of trust would you build there and how can we help you with 
effectively managing your security in a day-to-day because every company is unique. So uh, please feel free to come and visit us there and uh, we look forward to running through that with you. So thank you very much, guys.